Well, I met some wonderful characters during my 30-year association with the Nine Network here in Sydney, including a fellow called Ross Hutchison, with whom I shared many a chat in the make-up room and the corridors of Channel Nine headquarters at Willoughby. Now, I've always known that Ross was a great lover of all sorts of horses, but I never for one moment expected him to turn up in harness racing in his early 60s. He's currently pursuing his trainer driver's licence with the same brand of dedication that has been his lifelong trademark. It's not uncommon for people to be bitten by the harness racing bug late in life. A recent recruit to the Sydney ranks is Ross Hutchison, who may well be the first show business personality to set his sights on a training and driving involvement. This 62-year-old dynamo hasn't looked back since his doctor recommended gymnastics and dancing as a likely deterrent for his childhood asthma. A breezy personality, boundless energy and loads of talent have taken Ross to the upper echelon as a dancer and choreographer. His TV credits include the ABC's Make Ours Music and legendary Channel 9 programs like Sound of Music, Bandstand and the Super Flying Fun Show. It all started at age four when he wandered away from his parents at a concert. When they did find me, there I was, yes, on the centre stage in the middle of, there was, some, there was a concert going on, there was a, there was a show and uh, there was your mate up there centre stage singing Goodbye Little Yellow Bird. Of course it brought the house down and everybody's screaming at you and from that moment I said this is where I belong, <laughs> centre stage. So it started yes, it would have been four, yeah. Christ. You, you worked through that wonderful era when variety shows were king on Australian television your personal favourite? Oh, I guess, I guess it was the responsibility of, uh, of Bandstand because it was, it was a, the number one show right throughout Australia. Both the, the uh, Brian Hendo, Hendo's verse, uh, his Bandstand and Daryl Summers' Bandstand, they were vital in the communication and the launching of new talents, new Australian talents, not only all of the big stars that came from overseas just to be on Bandstand, and I have, you know, I choreographed a lot of their film clips and things like that through Nine and through the Grundy organisation. And I loved it for that reason. The wackiest would have been the Super Flying Fun Show with our mate Jimmy Badger, uh, where I played, I think, about 14 or 15 different character and was the personal choreographer of all of the characters. Sound of Music was magnificent. When I came over there, they released me from Bandstand to go to Sound of Music with Bill McGrath and Carlo Carter, who I thoroughly learned so much and enjoyed great big production numbers. Because then it was like, it was, there were mini musicals that we'd literally do, we'd do every Friday night. And they were like the big shows I used to do for Tivoli and for uh, all of the major big houses and uh, JC Williamson's. They were the big musical days and then came television and then came uh, and Sound of Music. So, I I'm not going to pick one of them because I mean there was Barry Crockers and Billy Newman's, uh, all of those Sound of Musics that, uh, and of course all the stars that we got to work with. I mean some enormous stars with Bandstand. The most famous person with whom you got to work in that golden era. Ah, uh, everybody from Sammy Davis Jr., Liza Minnelli, Benny Hill. I mean it was an amazing that this little Aussie was. Uh, in those situations, but I guess that you had to be at that level to get those opportunities. I'd, but they're just things that you take in your stride and you do it. But I had wonderful, not only got the opportunity to be Liza Minnelli's dancer, but to actually dance with, with Sammy, who's very much still part of my life because I, I shared a lot of private time uh, with different functions after shows. He'd do his show and I'd come off stage. Bernard King was a great hero at, and we used to be a great double act. And he, like his godfather to both my daughters. And he was a strong, we were a strong team with our Roxy Review and all the cabaret and theatre restaurants we did. Uh, and then Sammy would finish his show, we'd finish our shows and we'd meet up. So Sammy would hire a, a movie house 
and he'd want to see the latest and have it flown in from America and we'd be sitting up there at midnight watching the latest released movies and to have dinner with him and have time and he gave me time he gave me precious time of his enormous wealth of knowledge and his great spirit he was just the most wonderful man Mr Versatility regularly wears another hat as a minister of the Australian Spiritual Church of God. Let's give thanks for being brought together here in friendship and love and harmony and happiness and joy in healing and laughter. Now the congregation uh, to whom you speak frequently here in Penrith yeah. is non-denominational. Correct. In fact, you described it to me as an easy-going church. That is, yeah, that's what spiritualism's about. It's just, it's non-confrontatory, non-judgmental. It is the acceptance of the fact that we're all from the one, the one source of creation. And yes, there's all kinds of, it's easy going, yeah, just nice and, actually, it's probably described our church and spiritual churches and people of that nature, the, the church runs on hugs. Well, your love of horses led you to providing a home and a long-term home to a former Melbourne Cup winner called Just a Dash. He won the 1981 Cup trained by TJ Smith and ridden by Peter Cook. I had him here in Penrith a long time. Mm. I used to do all the Melbourne Cup days and uh, people would pay money for charity to have their photos taken with him. To hear the crowds screaming for him like a teenage idol, you know, a mm. teen idol rock and roll star. And it was just, and he loved it. He loved his public. I'd, as soon as I was getting near a racetrack, you would know, you'd, hear, you'd feel the float. She'd start this way. Chelsea, just hang on. And I dropped the float and I had this beautiful big show rug made for him, pink satin and black and with just a dash written all over it, 1981 Melbourne Cup. Mm. He just back himself out of the float there and he would parade. Yeah. He would do the most wonderful parade in the world and the, he would go and let the people adore him. Hi ho, hi ho, it's half the work I go. A couple of years ago at around age 60, you decided to catch up on something that had been in the back of your mind for a long, long time. <sighs> yeah. So you took out a harness trainer's permit. Yep. You enrolled in the TAFE horseman's course. Yep. And here we are. Here are Seven mate. trial drives down. Yes. Thirteen to go. Thirteen to go. And look out there, I'm going to be out there the, on the track with you big guys doing the big stuff and taking your money. Oh, I love it. John, it was, uh, it would be, yeah, a couple of years ago and with my brother's a wonderful establishment. He's done, he's, my brother's done a great job with our breeding program and his daughters. And his, Katie, his eldest girl, is the only licensed driver now in the family. And I, they said, oh, come on, you, know, you can work a couple of horses for us. So I jumped in the gig down there, went around the home track, and my, oh, I said, how long has this been going on? I said, I've yeah. been denying this all my life. I said, this, and that was it. I'd, from that moment, I hopping into the working gig, uh, going around that paddock, yeah. And I come straight back. You were besotted and bought oh. Hilda May. Bought. You purchased this lovely little mare yeah. with the From express David purpose David. in mind of notching up those 20 trials. Exactly right. Exactly right. And after I've got my 13 more to go, I'll have a B grade license and then I'm after my A grade. So look out. Because I just love it. All of your life you've been setting yourself goals yeah. and achieving the great majority of them. Yeah. This is the newest mountain you've decided to climb, to become yeah. a professional yes. trainer driver. Isn't that... Um, Are I, you deadly serious about this? Oh, mate, I am so focused. Deadly serious. I am... It is an absolute... It's more than a passion. It is an absolute, I need to tell you, determination because I love it. I mean, every second I'm out on a track, from the time that you're up, you get to the stables, I'm there, to thank goodness, Hilda May's uh, Ronnie, at Ronnie Cooper's place here, at Robin Cooper's place, and she's stabled there. I know she's in good conditions and good safe places, but I get there and we muck out all of the stalls from that moment, from the day, and then we put them on the joggers and then and everything about it and the greatness of the spirit of our wonderful horses, our standard breeds, I just... No, there isn't a moment I don't love. Deep down, yes. I suspect that at heart you really are a song and dance man. <laughs> I'm singing in the rain, yes, singing in the rain. What a glorious feel, and I'm happy again. I'm laughing at clouds. Sun's 
Claudio Rusco, doing what he does best, I feel. Uh, I've got to pay special credit here to uh, our tape editor, Neil Summers, who had the unenviable task of matching Gene Kelly's Singing in the Rain to the tap steps of Ross Hutchison. Ross told me it'd work, but Neil Summers was the man who weaved the magic. Oh, well, he's done it. Good to see, too, getting into the sport at later in life. And that, let's hope that those 13 trial drives aren't too far away. Is 13, is it? He only needs 13 more, and he'll be out on the track. There are drivers on a track everywhere near going, you. 13? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're doing the math in their mind how long it'll be before he's out there. I'll tell you what, uh, if enthusiasm counts, he'll be winning a miracle mile. <laughs> this is the lovely thing about this sport, though. How often we see people from all walks of life, high pressure businessmen who've taken to this uh, as a release of stress. Ross is not doing it for that reason, he's doing it because he, he loves horses and he loves harness racing. Yeah, that no, was a terrific story John, it really was. Good on you Roscoe, good luck and I hope I'm there when you drive your first winner. Okay, we're off to a break now with the following trivia question. Which horse won the 2004 Vic Bread Super Series three-year-old Phillies final?